In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to add surface detail to your objects using geometry nodes. So in this video, I'll show you how to create a custom geometry node setup, and you can even add the geometry node setup as an asset browser into Blender. And once you've added the geometry node modifier to an object, it'll add surface detail to your object. And I'm also selling the Geometry Node Surface Detail Modifier setup on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page as well as the Blender Market. So if you'd like to purchase the Add Surface Detail Geometry Node setup, you can find the link in the description and that's a great way to help support this channel. But I'll also show you how to create it yourself if you'd like to in this video. And the Geometry Node setup will also have some different custom settings. So once you add it to an object, you have a few different settings here. So you have the strength so I can turn this up and down. We also have the subsurf level so I can turn this up if I want it to to be more detailed. Then we also have the edge crease, so I can turn the edge crease down if I want it to be really smooth. So this would be good for if you're adding it to something like a monkey head. So I just have this monkey head here and you can see it's very low poly, but I can just click and drag and drop the add surface detail modifier onto the monkey head and you can see it looks a bit sharp in the edges. So in this case I could turn the edge crease down and now it's going to look much smoother. But for something like this, like a cube, you might want to turn the edge crease up. So if you're creating something like some rock or a stone block or maybe a brick you could turn the edge crease up. Then we also have some more settings like the surface scale and we also have the surface detail level. Then we also have this roughness value to make it even more detailed. Then we have the surface distortion and then we also have the surface randomize and then we also have the shade smooth value which you can toggle on and off. And you can add in the modifier with the asset browser. However, you can also just append in the geometry nodes modifier into your Blender file, and then you can select an object. You can click on add modifier, and you can add geometry nodes, and you can click on the drop down, and you can add the add surface detail. So it's a really cool modifier you can use in your scenes if you're trying to turn an object into something very organic, like rock or brick or some other organic object. So here we are in a new scene in Blender and my screencast keys will be right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'm going to start by selecting everything and I will hit X and let's click on delete and I'm now going to add some objects that we can add the geometry nodes modifier to. So I'll press shift A and of course let's add a new cube because you know we can't use the default cube we have to delete it and then add a new one. I'm also going to press shift A and let's go here and add a cylinder. I can move the cylinder over so just add whatever objects you want to add the modifier setup to. Now for some of these objects, I am going to subdivide it a little bit just so that they have a little bit more geometry. So I'll hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I'll select everything here on the cube. And then using the object context menu, I can click on subdivide and I'm going to do that twice. So it's somewhat subdivided. And then I'll go back to object mode. I'll select this object and go into edit mode and I can press control R to add some loop cuts. And then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel just to make a few cuts, just left click and then right click. So it's placed right there. And I can click here to go to the face select. I'll select this face, shift select this face, and then you can hit the I key to inset, click to place that, I again to inset, click to place that, and then I one more time to inset that. So now we just have some objects with even geometry. So I'll just first start by selecting the cube and I'll go over here to the modifiers. Let's click on add modifier and I can add geometry nodes. So then we can click on new here to add new geometry nodes because geometry nodes are just a modifier on an object. And then let's click on this to rename it. And I will rename this to add surface detail. So that's what the geometry nodes modifier is called. So now to get to the geometry nodes, I'm going to click here on the geometry geometry nodes workspace. Now if you don't have the geometry nodes workspace, you can click on the plus here and you can go here to general and then you can click on geometry nodes or another way to do this over here on the layout is to click in the corner and click and drag to split the window and then you can click right here in the corner and you can change this to the geometry node editor. So you can do that that way as well. I'm going to go over here to the geometry nodes workspace. So I have the 3D view right here and then I have the geometry nodes right here. In your blender scene it might be a little bit different so you might have the geometry node down here here, but I've kind of customized this because I like having this over here and the geometry nodes over here. All right, so if you've selected this object, you should have the add surface detail. And so we have a group input and a group output. So the first thing that I want to do is smooth it out and add more geometry to the object. So to do that, I'll press shift A. And after you press shift A, you can just hit the S key to go to the search. And I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier. So there are a few here, but I want to use the subdivision surface. So we're now going to take the subdivision surface and we're going to put this here in the wire between the group input and the group output. So you can see it's now subdividing it. Now here on the level, I'm going to turn this up to three, but you can change this to whatever default level you want for the subsurf. I would recommend not going too high because then when you add it onto objects, 
objects it might get a bit laggy so I would just leave it at like a two or a three and then you can turn up the detail if you want to on each object. So I now want to crease the edges a bit because you can see it is quite smooth. So here on the edge crease, I will just turn this up and I am going to turn mine to like a 0.3 or maybe just like a 0.4. That's a bit better. But of course, we will be using this as one of the custom values in the modifier setup. So you can change this depending on what object you're adding it to. Now, as well as this, I want to shade this smooth because you can actually see the geometry there. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for the set shade smooth. We'll put this after the subdivision surface and then just check mark the shade smooth. All right, so we now have a cube which is sharp and is subdivided, but we still haven't added all of the surface detail. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A, then I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for the set position node. And let's drop the set position after the shade smooth. So we can use the set position node to make all the vertices going in different areas. So some vertices will pop out and other vertices will pop in using the set position. You can see if I change the offset here, so the X, Y, and Z, it is going to move them around on the X. X, Y, and Z, although right now it is moving them all together and I want it to look really noisy. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture and then I'll put this underneath the subdivision surface. Now here on the 3D, I'm going to change this to 40 instead, just because I think that works better for the 3D space. And then I want to change a few other settings. So I'll turn the scale to two. I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. So it's very detailed and I'll turn the roughness to like a 0.55. And then also I do want to add a little bit of distortion, so I'll turn the distortion to 0.1. So now we can take the noise texture and we can put it into the set position, and that'll make the geometry of the mesh be kind of moving around because the noise texture is distorting it. However, I do also want to be able to control how strong the noise is. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search, and I'll search for the mix color, and let's drop the mix color underneath the set shade smooth. And then I want to take the noise texture color and let's put that into color B and then I can take color A and let's make that fully black. And one more thing that I want to do, I want to click on the mix here and I want to change this to linear light instead. So I can now take the linear light result and let's put that into the offset of this set position. So now you can see that this noise texture is affecting the position of all the vertices. And if I change the scale, you can see that's affecting it and also the detail and the roughness. Now why I added the mix node and why I changed this to linear light is because we now have this factor value and the factor value is going to blend between color A and color B. So color A is fully black, so if I turn the factor all the way to zero, it's using color A which is fully black, and so it's not offsetting the positions at all. However, if I turn the factor up more and more, it is going to use more of color B, and color B is the noise texture. And so we can now drag the factor around to control the strength of the noise texture. And if the linear light was changed to mix, now if I drag this around, you can see it's offsetting in a weird angle, so I just need to change the mix back to the linear light, and now it's going to get stronger going out on all angles. So for now, I just want the factor to be at like a 0.1 because I don't want it to be very strong because if it's too strong, the vertices will overlap. So for now, I'll just leave it at 0.1. And then right here on the subdivision surface, you can turn up this value to make it much more detailed. So if you want this to be super detailed, you could turn up really high. It might get a little bit laggy though if you make it super detailed. So I'll just leave this down here at a three for now. And then you can also play around with the noise texture so you can change the scale and the detail to play around with how the noise always look. And so that is it. It really is just that simple. But now I'm going to show you how to add the customizable values because that'll make it much easier to use. Instead of going here into the node group, we're going to be adding some customizable values and they'll be over here on the modifier properties. So the first custom value that I want to add is the strength. So let's take the factor here and we're going to put it into this extra socket on the group input. And now you can see it's showing up right here and so I can drag it around. Now if you press the N key to open up the side panel, you can click here on group and you can see that there are different inputs and outputs. So I'll just make this smaller so I have a bit more space. So then I'm going to double click on the input and I'm just going to rename this to strength. Now I also want to be able to control the subsurf level, so let's take the level and put that into the extra socket and then I can double click on this and I'm going to rename this one to subsurf level. Then I also want to be able to control the edge crease, so we will drag this into the extra socket as well. And then I also want to be able to control all the noise settings, so let's put the scale into the extra socket, the detail, the roughness, and also the distortion. We're going to put all of those into the extra sockets. And I can click and drag down here on these little dots here to make this bigger. And then I do want to rename these, so if I just double click on these to rename these, I'm just going to add the word surface before them. So we're going to have the surface scale and the surface detail. 
and the surface roughness and the surface distortion. And then as well as that, I also want the surface randomize. So this W value is just gonna randomly move the noise around. So it's kind of like a seed value. So let's put the W into the extra socket there. And then I can click on this to rename it. And I'm gonna rename this one to surface randomize. And then finally, I wanna be able to control the shade smooth. So we'll take the shade smooth and put that into the extra socket. And then you can see that it's right there, shade smooth. So I'll press the N key to close the side panel. I'll drag this out so it's a bit bigger and I can make this a bit smaller. So now I can click on the cube and we have all the different settings. So the strength and we also have the subsurf level and we have the edge crease and then we have the surface scale, the detail, and also we have the roughness and the distortion and then also the randomize and then finally the set shade smooth. And we don't even need to go into the actual node setup. We can just use all the settings right here. And then if you want to add this to another object in your scene, you can click on the object, you can click on add modifier, you can add geometry nodes, and then you can click here on this drop down and just click on add surface detail. And then it's going to add the same geometry node setup to that object. And then another cool thing you could do is add a material to this. So what I'm gonna do is click and drag down here to split the window. And I'm gonna click right up here in the corner and I'll change this to the asset browser. And then if I click here on all, I'm gonna be using my ultimate Blender procedural material pack. I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in purchasing my ultimate Blender procedural material pack. But right here, I'm gonna type in sand and we have this cool sandstone and then I can just add in the sandstone and there we go. So we now have a cool sandstone brick or sandstone cube. And then if I want to make this more detailed, of course, I could turn up the subsurf level to make it even more detailed. So you can see here's the object before adding the modifier with just the sandstone material, and then here it is after. So it's adding all that bump and also giving it those smooth edges. So this is a cool modifier setup, but in order for it to be useful, you need to be able to easily add it into other projects that you're working on. So I'll now show you two different ways to add it to your other projects. So I've opened up a new Blender scene, and the first way to add it into another project is to just append in the data. So I'm going to click right here on File, and then I will click on Append. And then with Blender's File Browser, just locate to the folder where you've saved the Blender file with the Geometry Node setup. And if you haven't saved the file yet, just save it somewhere on your computer, and then you can go here to the Blender file, you can double click on the Blender file, and then you can go here to Node Tree, and you can see here is the Add Surface Detail. So I'll just double click on this to add it in. So I can now click on the cube here or just select whatever object. You can go here to the modifiers, click on add modifier and add geometry nodes. And then here on the drop down, just click on add surface detail. And then you can also turn up the subsurface and I can change the edge crease and then also the different detail settings. So that is one quick way to add it into your other scenes. However, there is another way to do this and that is to actually add this geometry node setup as an asset in Blender's asset library. So to do this, you'll need to locate to the folder where you you've saved the original modifier setup. And you need to make sure you just save this file somewhere on your computer where you're not going to move it around so that Blender doesn't lose the file data. So just put it somewhere on your computer where you're going to keep it. So then what you can do is go to the add surface detail geometry node setup that we created. And here on the subsurface level, I'm going to turn this down to three because I want three to be the default. And then right here, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to click on Mark as Asset. So this modifier setup has now been added as an asset in Blender's Asset Browser. So if you open up the Asset Browser and you click here and then click on Current File, you're going to see the modifier that you've added as an asset. And if you want to add a custom image, you can press the N key to open up the side panel. And you can click here to add a custom image. Now, if you've purchased this modifier product with the link in the description, then the Blender file will already come with a custom image and the modifier modifier will be marked as an asset. So you can just add it to the asset library into Blender. However, if you're creating it yourself, this is how you can add it as an asset library. So once you've set this up as an asset in Blender's asset browser, you can press Control S just to save the file again, and then you can close this file. So again, I've opened up a new scene in Blender and I now just need to add in the asset library. So to do that, I'll click on edit and I'll go to preferences. And then you can click down here on file paths and you can open up the asset libraries and you can click on the plus icon. And then you can locate to the folder where you have the Blender file, which has the 
modifier as an asset and then just click on add asset library then you can rename this so i'm going to call it add surface detail and then you can click on the save preferences button so that it's always in your future blender projects so i can now just close blender's user preferences and i can click and drag to split the window here so drag in the corner and then you can click here in the corner and you can change this to the asset browser and then you can click here on all and you can go down here and click on add surface detail and then here is the modifier and this is the file that you'll get if you purchase this modifier setup with the link in the description so now that it's added as an asset i can just click and drag and i can drop it onto any object and then if i click here on the modifiers i can just easily change the settings so i can turn up the detail and i can change the edge crease and just play around with the settings i could also add this onto a monkey head so i'll rotate the monkey head kind of scale it up and i can just drag and drop the add surface detail and then again play around with the settings so i'll maybe turn the subsurf level up and i can also turn the edge crease down so it's very smooth and also maybe here on the strength i'll just turn this to like a 0.05 so it's half as strong so that is it it really is that easy and so that is how you can create a custom modifier to add surface detail to your objects using geometry nodes so i hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching and if you'd like to pick up this modifier product again you can find it with the link in the description and purchasing is a great way to help support this channel but i hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching